reason versus perception. So what we have here, this green line, which looks somewhat like a lightsaber, represents reason. And the red circle with which it's encased that we have here represents perception. Now for this explanation, reason represents our conscious attention and what we reckon to be about the world with that awareness. So reason is our conscious reckoning of the world. Whereas perception represents our conscious and unconscious. If we have sensed anything on a conscious or unconscious level, then we have perceived that thing. All of that sensory data and our reckoning of it is our perception. It is the entire mass of all apprehensions regarding existence. On screen next is an animation depicting what most people would recognize as reasoning or conscious awareness. In this way, our conscious attention shifts from topic to topic as newer things occur. The waveforms represent events in the external environment which have been perceived. You may have noticed, however, that the waveforms appear before reason attends to them. This is because our unconscious perceives events faster and pre-processes the information whereupon it decides if the events are worthy of conscious attention and what tone that attention should take to. If an event is deemed worthy, it's attended by reason. The present depiction is a colossal understatement for the ease of introducing this concept. There can be hundreds, perhaps even thousands of perceptions which the subconscious is processing at any one time. Reason, on the other hand, will only attend a minute part of the entirety of perceived events, typically focusing on a single subject. So this creates a massive contrast between an unconscious awareness that processes thousands of things at any given moment and a reasoning which focuses on a single subject. If this depiction was to scale and the symbol for reasoning was an accurate size, the circle representing perception would scale far beyond the screen, perhaps a mile or so beyond. And what's more, Reasoning attends, by and large, only outward events, whereas the unconscious processes both internal and external events simultaneously. All of this means that reasoning is a subset of perception, a highly specialised subset, yet a subset nonetheless. Now let's look at a more detailed interpretation with some figures of the neurobiological processes involved here. The time scales of these animations are true to life in regard to the time it takes between perception of a subject and conscious awareness. Each electrochemical flicker is 50 milliseconds in duration. We know that it takes about 250 milliseconds, a quarter of a second, for a thought to appear in conscious awareness. So every five flickers represents the time it takes from perceiving an event to being consciously aware of that event. And that's if the subconscious deems it worthy of attention. It's really quite eye-opening just how much pre-processing goes on prior to experiencing a thought. The computational ability of our unconscious is so mind-bogglingly powerful that it can be difficult to conceptualise and even believe. So this next animation will help us firmly grip the notion. Here we have the beginning of a switch in conscious attention where reasoning is attending to a situation and will be transferred to another subject. We're going to go through the process in 50 millisecond intervals and remember each electrochemical flicker is 50 milliseconds in duration. The waveforms on the left of the red ring represent the unconscious perceiving an event and we're within the 15 millisecond range of the first flicker here. 
above the perception key, you can see that the subconscious recognition of events is known to take place in 14 milliseconds. We know this from experiments where participants were placed in front of a screen displaying pictures of flowers and mushrooms, while images of snakes and spiders were flashed within the main picture at 14 millisecond durations. At this speed, the conscious mind cannot detect the images, yet fear was detected through skin conductant responses in participants who had snake or spider phobias. Those who were afraid of snakes showed stress responses to only the snake images. Those with spider phobias only showed stress responses to spider images. Therefore, the subconscious can reliably define between images it sees of 14 milliseconds. The next flicker represents the 50 millisecond to 100 millisecond range. We know that the right amygdala can detect and differentiate between such things as fear, safety, familiar and unfamiliar in the 60 millisecond range. The basic archetypes as direction of movement, intention of behaviour, gender and types of expressed emotions could be processed here. Remember that it takes 250 milliseconds to become consciously aware of a perceived event. So I'm going to speculate on a few things we know happen in this range, yet the times are not specific. There are many processes that could be happening simultaneously. This is really just an outline of the process to show what's involved based on what we know. Here we have the 100 to 150 millisecond range where the unconscious could compare what it's already gleaned to our wider associative memory network to search for relevant experiences and matches of behavior. Here we have the 150 to 200 millisecond range where the unconscious can contextualize the related data from the perceived subject within the present scenario, thus reducing irrationality and such behaviors, filtering in hopes, ideological narratives and homeostatic objectives. The 200 to 250 millisecond range is the final stage where the precognitions get packaged together and encapsulated with an appropriate emotion. This emotional valence and tone will affect both biological and cognitive functions so as to process the subject in a specific and optimal manner such as raising or lowering vigilance, blood pressure, muscle tone, rejection or acceptance, making attention acute or broad for differentiated processing, as well as instilling a broader sense of importance and value to the subject at hand. Now at the 250 millisecond range, we are instinctively motivated by our precognitions to attend the perceived event. Next is this process in real time. Some of you might be thinking, impressive life chariot. Yet it's hardly mind-bogglingly powerful and difficult to believe. I have some sympathy for that notion for this animation. Yet remember, this is a magnificent understatement. So let's add a little more complexity to closer represent the reality of our situations. Here we have the same animation of our conscious switching attention but additionally, there are waveforms representing external events which have been perceived and circle beacons representing internal events which have been perceived. The subconscious processes them simultaneously. All of these symbols have been perceived, so all undergo some of the precognitive processes that we see on the left hand side of the screen. Let's add a little more complexity to illustrate these processes too. 
OK, now we can see a representation of the initial unconscious processes which every perceived event goes through. Again, this is in real time. Each electrochemical flicker is a 50 millisecond duration of processing. Nevertheless, the current processes being displayed on the screen represent only a single event being processed at any one time. Therefore, we have to use our imaginations to comprehend a set of each of these unconscious processes for every event on the screen. As there's probably a maximum of 10 or 15 events on the screen at any one time, we'd need to multiply the unconscious activity on the left that many times and have them run simultaneously to appropriately represent what's happening in this animation. One further addition of complexity will need our imaginations too. Can you remember when I said, if this depiction were to scale, the red circle representing perception would be far beyond the screen? I also said that there can be hundreds and perhaps thousands of unconscious processes happening simultaneously. Thus, to get an appreciation of our actual brain power, we have to multiply the current processes and events on the screen into the hundreds and thousands. 